What's up guys, Ivan Carranza here and welcome to Bass, Bass Tone, tone, tone Tuesday. 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 Today we're talking about how the amount of drive affects your bass signal. And the idea for this video came because currently my band Ashmakers, together with my friend and mixing engineer Henning Opperman, we're currently working on the final mixes of our upcoming EP. And one thing came up in one of the songs, and that was that the guitars had too much gain, meaning too much drive, too much distortion, and we had to reamp them. And why did we have to reamp them? It's because when you have too much gain, too much drive, you start losing punch, you start losing definition because you take out some of the transients. Transients are the loud spike that you see when you record a note and you play cleanly the amplitude of the note and then it decays. When you add too much distortion, all those transients just disappear and you see kind of like a sausage. Yes, everything is super compressed. You have no dynamics, you have no attack on the notes almost. And we had a, an issue with the guitars for that. And the same thing applies to the bass. If you start adding too much drive, you're gonna lose low end, you're gonna lose punch definition, and the whole performance is gonna suffer because of it. Now to demonstrate this, I recorded a short track with four different signals, one clean bass, one with a light drive, one with a medium drive, and one with a very, very distorted version of the same signal, so you can hear how the drive affects your perception of the tone. Now, I want you to pay attention to the low end, to the punch of the bottom end, and also to the note definition or percussiveness of the sound. So let's check out those samples, and then we're going to talk a bit more about that. As you could hear from the examples, the more you boost, the more the bass is going to sound closer to the distorted tone of the guitars, which makes sense because you're distorting also the bass. But at the same time, you're going to be losing low end punch, definition, and percussiveness. So in order to gain that back, you have to pull back on the drive a bit unless you have a crossover distortion pedal, which gives you a completely clean low end. But for most drive pedals and also tube amps, for example, that is not the case. So like I said before, maybe you have one drive pedal and you constantly get lost in the mix when you kick it in because you're using too much drive. One thing that you can do to fix this is to obviously use less drive. I think, you know, everyone feels tempted to boosts a lot of drive because you have a drive pedal and you want to get distortion, but you're going to lose low end. It depends on the pedal, of course, but generally speaking, if you boost too much, you're going to lose low end, you're going to lose punch and definition. So maybe you need to pull back a bit. And the way I go about it is that I boost only what I need, or I only boost the amount of drive that I need to make the bass blend better with the guitars. And I'm constantly paying attention to the low end punch. I'm gonna put in the description a video of a producer that I found very useful a few years back, and I hope you find it useful as well. I hope you guys liked the video. 
Let me know what you think in the comments. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the content that's coming to the channel. As always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care. Mm -hmm.